This is a short video to help you understand how to collect urine samples uh, for your testing. The packet that you should have received from your healthcare provider should uh, contain these different pieces. You'll see that there's a set of instructions here, and the video will just parallel those instructions. Uh, be sure to read through those. There's an information card that you want to be sure to fill out before you uh, send the a packet back in containing your name and address and things like that. And then there are five uh, of these different collection cards uh, that are in the packet. Uh, we'll probably use only four of those. There's an extra one which we'll talk about. And there's a label for each of the cards. And then the return um, envelope is included as well. We'll come back to these at the end of the, the session. The important thing to do is to uh, make sure that each of the collection cards is properly labeled. So each of these uh, Labels you want to fill out, you put your, uh, your last name, uh, first initial, and then you'll include the time of collection and which uh, sample it is uh, regarding. When you finish each of the collections, uh, you can use that label to, to hang them up on a, a towel rack or on the edge of the, the bench. You'll see the top part of the card, there's a little place that kind of guides you where to stick it, and then you can hang it up. Uh, before you ship those back, you can just uh, take that label and fold it over the back side of the card so it's out of the way. Um, a word or two on the collection itself. Uh, you'll notice the top part of the card is a um, paper with some, some writing on it, and then the bottom part is like a piece of filter paper or coffee filter, and that's where you want to collect the urine. Um, ideally, we would like this to be what we call a midstream uh, urine collection. That is, you urinate a little bit and then uh, collect the sample and then... Um, you have your sample finished. Um, you can either urinate directly on the card. If it's more convenient, you can uh, take a, a new paper cup or plastic cup and urinate into that cup and then dip this paper into that um, and throw the cup away. Use a fresh cup for each collection. And then these should be hung up until they uh, are completely dry. Usually an overnight is uh, sufficient for that. Uh, when you finish, you should have your each of the Collection devices should be put in its own envelope and should have a completed label on each of them. You should have uh, completed your information card and send that back. And we'll come back to that at the end of the, the session. So there's four samples that we'd like to have you collect. One is, is collected um, in the early uh, evening, late afternoon. Dinner time is a good time to do that, just before dinner. Uh, one just before you go to bed. Uh, one first thing in the morning, and this is the most critical one. You need to collect this immediately after you wake up, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then a couple hours later, you collect the, the last sample. So let's look at each of those uh, individually. So the first one is collected uh, before you have dinner, uh, for example, at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock at night. Yeah, is a good time to do that. Um, general guidelines on what to consume. We'd like you to not drink any caffeine after lunch. Um, so no coffee, tea, Coke, things like that. And limit the amount of fluid that you are consuming. You know, a cup or two of water during the afternoon is fine, but don't be uh, planning on trying to hydrate during this time. And then you want to empty your bladder about two hours before uh, you collect. So if you're going to collect at 5 o'clock, um, empty your bladder about 3 o'clock, and then we'd rather you didn't drink anything between that time and the time of the collection. So in this case, you'd have your name uh, filled out again the time, let's say it's 5.15 in the evening, and this would be your dinner time sample. Hang that up um, and allow that uh, to dry. The next sample is collected at bedtime. Um, you're still going to continue your, your avoidance of caffeine and lots of liquids. You're probably going to drink something for dinner. That's fine, but don't uh, drink lots of, of liquids. Um, Two hours before you go to bed, uh, you want to uh, empty your bladder. So if you normally go to bed at 10.30, let's say, um, you want to empty your bladder about 8.30, and then, again, uh, restrict the fluids uh, between that time and the time you go to bed. Another label should be filled out at this time. Uh, your name, let's say that this was done at uh, 10.35 uh, at night, and so 10.30 p.m., and this is your bedtime sample. The next sample is the morning sample uh, right after you wake up, and the operative term here is immediately. Um, so as soon as you wake up, 
go and collect the first sample. Don't lay around in bed and, and watch television or something before you collect the sample. And the reason for this is that as soon as you wake up, your system begins to kick in, and after about 10 minutes, your cortisol levels are going to begin to change, and we don't want to have the testing confused by that. So uh, alarm goes off, get up, collect your sample, and then uh, do whatever else you need to do. Uh, that will be your third sample. Um, again, filling out the name and information. Let's say that this is uh, 6.30 in the morning that you collect that. That's your overnight sample. And um, hang that one up to dry. The last sample is collected uh, two hours later. We call that the morning sample. And so about two hours after you have collected that first one, uh, collect this last sample. Uh, during that time, we'd like to have you uh, restrict your fluids. No coffee yet. Um, a, a cup of, of uh, liquid for 100 pounds. So if you're a 150 pound person, you know, a cup and a half of something is fine. So you can have your glass of orange juice to kind of get you going in the morning, uh, but no coffee yet. Uh, at this point, if you, you can't uh, urinate, uh, or in fact for any of these samples, if you have difficulty urinating, drink a glass of water and that will usually uh, allow you to go in, in, a, in a few minutes uh, to collect them. One other uh, a side mark is that if you your schedule gets messed up and one of these samples you miss, you forget to collect one in the morning, uh, or uh, you drink a lot of coffee at dinner time and you go, oh no, I messed up here. Well, wait until the next day, follow the same routine and collect the sample as normal. So that if you drink your coffee at dinner time, then just the next day don't drink coffee after lunch and collect your bedtime sample as normal, and you should be okay. Um, you want to fill out the, the tag each time, and um, you should be fine. Now, what about uh, other kinds of uh, contingencies here? Uh, some of you may find that you need to get up during the night and uh, go to the bathroom. Uh, we've added a fifth strip in your uh, kit for this, so collect just as we've talked about before onto the fifth strip, then go back to bed and collect your morning sample as you normally would. If you have to get up a second time, uh, don't worry about that. Don't bother collecting anything there. This, this uh, fifth sample will be enough, and collect your sample in the morning as normal. That one will have a label on it. Let's say it, it's uh, 325 that you collected in the morning. That will also be an overnight sample, so just mark it as overnight. We can tell which one's which because of the, the time on here. Always remember to put your name and, and initials on these labels, and then hang that one up. Uh, to dry. Now, other kinds of things that can um, might be a problem. Uh, some of the hormones that you take uh, can influence the results of the testing. So we want to be a little careful if you're taking supplemental hormones. If you take your hormones in the morning, uh, take them normally on the day that you're going to do your uh, collection. So you take them at seven or eight in the morning, and then um, in the afternoon, you make your dinner time and your evening collection. Uh, wait until after you've made that second collection in the morning, that two-hour delay uh, after you've uh, woken up, before you take your hormones on day two, and then that'll be fine. So we have the hormones from day one in there, but we don't have any from day two. If you take your hormones in the evening, uh, wait until after you've taken the bedtime sample. So you take the dinner time and the bedtime sample, then you can take your hormones and uh, proceed as, as normal. Um, now, because the hormones can sometimes cause some problems with uh, interference, we want to be especially careful if you're taking supplemental hormones. So wash your hands both before and after you make your collection, and um, after you take your hormones. And it's especially important in this case not to touch the filter paper portion of the uh, collection card. Uh, and you shouldn't really do that anyway. Uh, remember that card has the top part will have some text on it. It's okay to handle that. Just don't handle the bottom part, which looks like a coffee filter, uh, because that's where we're going to be taking our sample from. And there are some hormones that uh, potentially can cause some interferences here. So if you're taking cortisol, hydrocortisone, prednisone, or the uh, glucocorticoids, um, then talk to your health care provider. They may want you to stop taking those for a couple days uh, when you're doing this kind of testing. Uh, but they can uh, clarify that issue for you. So when you finish, you should have four or perhaps five uh, of these collection strips. Um, Pull them off the towel rack. Uh, just allow this last one to dry overnight, and uh, so everything should be dry. Fold the a label tag back over the card so it isn't in the way. Each uh, collection card should go in its own 
a Ziploc bag, uh, close them up, make sure that you filled out the information card, and stick this all in the return envelope and mail it back to us. Um, it's best to send these in as soon as you're finished so that uh, they're not sitting around and forgotten about or, or the samples age too much. Each sample should be in its own little plastic bag. And probably the most convenient way to do this is just send them to the post office. Just stick these, seal the bag, and uh, seal the envelope and, and mail it off like any other uh, padded envelope. You can put it in a UPS or, or FedEx uh, envelope if you want to, but the post office certainly is uh, less expensive and probably more convenient for you. It can just be sent by regular mail. Um, now, if you have any other questions, uh, go back and uh, review the uh, paper instructions that came with your kit. Um, if you have additional questions, your first point of contact should be your health care provider, uh, so you can talk to them and, and they can probably clarify things. Um, if uh, neither of those things help, uh, you're welcome to contact us at uh, info at uh, uh, urinehormones.com and we'll try to uh, help you out. And finally, we just want to thank you for uh, using our services.